Okay, so let's say I need a list of actors which are creative props. I could make an editable array of creative props. And then in my editor, let's say I have two of these so I can, you know, add my elements and then select these two. Simple enough. But what if I need more? You know, what if I need four of these? Well, you know, we can add more elements and we can just select them. Cool. But what if we need 256 of these? Hmm? Are you going to add 256 elements into the array? You can if you want to. Uh, but there's another way you can actually reference actors within your code, not using editables. And those are tags. So tags allow you to, as their name implies, tag an actor with a specific tag. And then within your code, we can look up all the actors in our world that have that specific tag. All right, so to get started, as we've said, we first need to create a tag within our first code. How do we do that? Well, the tag is just a class. So we're going to create our own tag class. Now to do this, firstly, you need to go up here and include this verse.org slash simulation slash tags, which will give us access to the tags module. And next, we want to define a new class. You can either do this up here or you can create a new tags folder or file and just do them there uh just for example i'm just gonna do them here because it's easier to see but you can do them in another file which i like to do if i have a bunch of tags so let's make a new tag called actor underscore tag so i'm just going to type actor underscore tag and like we said this is a class so we type in the class keyword now this class is going to inherit from the tag class so we just type in tag like that and just like that we've created our new Simple enough, you can either put a colon here or enclose this with these braces. Now we just go back into our UEFN and we just build our first code. So like we said, we need to tag the specific actor instances that we want to be tagged. And from then on, we can get a list of actors within our first code. So let's say I want to tag this ball right here, this specific ball I want to retrieve in my first code with a tag. What I need to do is I need to select this ball. And then you'll notice here in the details panel, we have the actor and all its components in here we can go in here where it says add to add a new component to this blueprint or actor and by the way i should probably mention that this obviously is a blueprint because that's what we need to actually reference within our verse code so we're going to add a component here and you're going to want to scroll down to where it says verse tag marco add that and just leave the name it doesn't really matter and, and then you'll notice here we have gameplay tags and in here we can specify whatever tags we want. And look at that, we have our actor underscore tag. So we click that. Now our instance is tagged. And notice I said instance because if we go to this one specifically, this one's not going to have the actor or tag. Well, to make your life a little easier, what you can do is you can select this and you can right click and copy or you know, control C. And then you can go into another actor and then in here, just like this and then control V and you'll notice we have the verse tag with the same tag applied there. Another cool thing is that if you go here to an actor that's already tagged and you duplicate this actor, you'll notice that the duplicated actor also has the tag that the original actor had. What you can also do is you can directly go into the blueprint itself of the actor and you can actually add the verse component here. Okay, so we're, we're happy with these two balls we have here and this one. And now we want to reference them in our code or actually get them within our code. So here back in verse, all we need to do is in our on begin, I'm going to create a tagged list, which is going to be equal to a get creative objects with tag. And in here, we need to pass an instance of our actor underscore tag. So just type in actor underscore tag or whatever the name of your tag is, and then type in these curly braces. And you'll notice when I go into the get creative objects with tag definition, it's going to return a list of creative object interface. Now this creative object interface is obviously an interface that's implemented by devices, creative props, and verse devices. It just means that they all share the same properties that is present within creative object interface. Now, because it returns a list of creative object interfaces, that's not actually a creative prop or a creative device. It actually acts as whatever we tag. We need to convert the object into whatever we want, whether that be a device or a creative prop. So because we have creative props, we're going to be casting our objects in here to a creative underscore prop. And the way we do that is firstly, I'm just going to loop over every tagged object within this tagged list. So for every tagged actor in our tagged list, 
what we want to do is we want to cast that actor and what casting means is it's basically going to try to convert the actor into whatever we're casting it to so in this example we wanted to convert it into a creative prop so we do if we do prop is equal to creative underscore prop of tagged actor like that now what the syntax is saying is we're going to be trying to convert this tagged actor into a creative underscore prop and notice the square braces this means that this is a failable expression which is why we need to put this inside an if statement because there's a chance that this tagged actor could be something like a radio so of course we cannot convert a radio into a creative prop so that will fail so that's why we need to put this inside our if statement and then if we can successfully get a creative prop from the current tagged actor that we're looping over i'm just going to print print tagged actor and i'm also just going to print the index of the actor here you notice i can get the index uh, using a for loop using this syntax all right so when we start our game we can see tagged actor zero one two because we obviously tagged three of our actor. now let's say i have these color tiles and i also want to tag them with our verse tag well i'm just going to add the verse tag here and now what this means is that now this should return a list of five elements that's probably a good time to mention that this get creative object with tag is going to return an unordered list of all your objects, meaning that you can't reliably say that tagged actor zero is whatever we tagged first in our game. If you do need stuff to be in a specific order, then you're going to have to use editables for this. So for every object, we don't know what that specific object is. So that's why we try to cast it into a creative prop here. And if we can successfully cast that to a creative prop, we print tagged. And I'm going to do another if statement. So if color tile is going to be equal to, we're going to cast our tagged actor to a, to a color changing tiles device of tagged actor. Right. So if we can successfully cast that actor into a color changing tile, I'm just going to print this and I'm just going to set that color to our team players. Okay. And when I start game, you'll notice that changed to color blue and you notice here in our print statements we have five total tagged actors three of those were creative props and two of those were successfully casted to a color tile thus printing this color tile so here we type in the class name of whatever we want and then we enclose our tagged actor to convert that into a color changing device if that succeeds we assign that to this color tile variable and with this color tile variable that's our actual device here and from then on, we can do whatever we want here. Now, if you don't know the class names of your Fortnite devices, what you can do is you can go in here into the fortnite.digest.verse file here. And then you want to click here and then just press Control F, which will bring up the search menu here. And you can type in the name of your device. So, for example, I can type in mutator. And you can see we get mutator underscore zone device. And I know this is a class name because over here it says class. And this is slightly indented to the left. And if we scroll up here, we have Skydive Volume, Vehicle Spawner, a bunch of vehicles here. We have more vehicle spawners, character device, you know, all these cool things here. So that's a good way to get all the class names. Or you can also look in the documentation. For our next example, let's say we have two blueprint props. We have a sphere and then a cube. And then in my code, I created a shape tag, which every shape is going to have. And then a sphere tag, which only spheres are going to have. And then obviously a cube tag. You notice here I've tagged our cubes with both the cube tag and the shape tag and our spheres with both the shape tag and then the sphere. Now we could do, right? So we could get every single shape actor using the shape underscore tag because we know both our spheres and our cubes have the shape tag and then we could loop over this list so do shape object in shape objects and then we want to cast them to a creative prop so we can do shape is equal to creative underscore prop of shaped object and we know this is going to succeed because we only included creative props in here so this is going to successfully complete every iteration of our for loop but now the problem is is that both our cubes and our spheres, they both have the shape underscore tag. So seemingly there's no way to distinguish which one has the sphere tag and which one has the cube tag. So there's two ways you can filter them out. The first one is using this creative object with tag function, which we're doing here. And then what we can do is we can get all the tags that our current actor, the shape has. So what we can do is we can do tag view is equal to our shape dot get tags like that. 
And if we peek at the definition of this get tags, you'll notice that this returns a tag underscore view, which is defined as an interface here. Now the cool thing is that this tag view can use these, these functions here. So this has function is going to take in a tag and is going to check if this tag view has this specific tag. If it is, it's going to succeed. And then here we can also pass in a list of tags using the has any. And if our actor has any of that tags, either being one or all of them, or any number in between, then that's going to succeed again. And then we can also use this has all, which as you can probably imagine, we pass in a list of tags. And if that specific tag view has every single tag within that list, then that function is going to succeed. So what we can do here is we can do if we can do tag view dot has, right? And then we pass in a tag here. So I'm going to do sphere underscore tag for this one. And if that tag view, meaning that actor has the tag sphere underscore tag, then we can do print sphere found. And then we can also do if tag view dot has our cube tag, then we can just print out cube. Found. So this way you can sort of filter out what specific actor we're dealing with. And then I'm also just going to move our cube. Like that. Okay, so going back in game and we start our game, you can see that only the cubes move because only those satisfy the criteria that they have the cube underscore tag. And if we look at our log, we have sphere found, cube found, cube found, and then sphere found. And then obviously a similar approach can be taken if we do has all, except these two functions will take an array of tags. So you can just enclose this in array and just like that, you just pass in a list which is going to function like that. Now, the other way you can filter out your tags is with using the creative object with tags. Now, this specific function takes in what's known as a tag search criteria, which is a class. So if you type in tag underscore search underscore criteria, you can type in colon. And in here, we're just going to look at what this actually is. So you notice here we have our tag search criteria, which is a class which has these members. We have required tags, we have preferred tags, we have exclusion tags, and then we have sort type. So there are a list of tags. And what required tags does is that specific object needs to have every single tag within that list. Preferred tags is only going to work if there are no required tags specified. And this just means that any tag in this list is going to be valid and therefore that object is going to be returned. So that object only needs to have one of these tags for it to satisfy this condition. And then exclusion tags is just if that object does not have any of the tags in that list, then it's going to be returned. So I'm going to rename this to cube objects. And then for my tag search criteria, I'm going to do required tags equals. And remember, this takes in a list of tags. So we're going to type in array and we type in our tags here. Firstly, it needs to have obviously the shape tag. And secondly, it needs to have the cube underscore tag. So what this means is we're only going to get the objects that have both the shape tag and the cube tag, which obviously is only these two cubes right here. And we can do the same thing with our sphere objects. So sphere objects, just like that. So we do the same thing here, except this has the shape tag and the sphere tag. And then we can just use them as normally here. So just do four cube object in cube objects. We're going to cast this into a creative prop. Print found a cube sphere and then print found a sphere. We go back in here. We just build our first code. And then in our game, you'll notice found a cube and then found a sphere respectively. So only twice and only twice. Anyway, that's it for tags. As always, I hope this was helpful and yeah.